Conservative Party of Canada rally in the back. Great to be here in Windsor, Nova Scotia, birthplace of hockey. We don't need a fifth. This time, we need to elect a 
strong, stable, conservative majority. Even by their own estimate, the NDP spending would increase by $70 billion over four years. Just to put that in perspective, that is 10 times, almost 10 times our platform. And that does not include the promises the opposition have made uncost at virtually every campaign stop. Anyone knows that that amount of reckless spending is not affordable that it means tax hikes, billions and billions of dollars in job-killing tax hikes. They have said as much, and friends, they said it because they do not understand what conservatives understand. You cannot create jobs and prosperity by raising taxes. Okay. Remember, the NDP opposed us savagely when we cut the sales tax, the federal sales tax, from 7 to 6 to 5 percent. And I'll tell you this, Jack Layton will raise that sales tax back up with a smile just as quick as the NDP did here in Nova Scotia. Yeah. The federal sales tax at 5% is this party, the Conservative Party. Of Canada. <laughs> the NDP tax hikes will not stop there. Look at their program the carbon tax. $20 billion in carbon taxes come from the pockets of hardworking Canadian consumers. 10 cents a liter at least or for gasoline, and that's just the start. Taxes, taxes friends, on employers, not a couple of companies, on 100,000 Canadian employers. Tax hikes that will come from the payrolls and jobs of working Canadian families. A one-third hike to your EI premiums, doubling CPB premiums, and on it goes. Friends, as Conservatives, this is the difference. We only make commitments that we can afford, and if we say we can afford them, it means we can afford them without raising your tax. Thank you. 
take to your friends and neighbors and this riding across this province, across this country. <laughs> Mr. Ignatieff has left his party's traditional roots, running on a carbon copy of the NDP tax and spend platform. Friends, most traditionally liberal voters do not want NDP economic policies. They do not want NDP tax hikes. And that's why we have to make sure that the next parliament, that we get those people to vote for us in the next parliament, does not raise taxes because Canada needs a strong, stable, national conservative. <laughs>
while NDP and Liberal MPs were voting against these projects, our Conservative Caucus was delivering for all. Our second priority is our low tax plan for families and more specifically measures we will bring in immediately for our seniors. Our low tax plan for families has delivered real practical benefits that assist families in making ends meet. The tax credit for kids sports for their artistic activities, the tax credit for first time home buyers, the $100 per month for preschool children. You know for instance we have taken off we have reduced the federal tax burden for the average Canadian family by more than three thousand. Other things I know are of interest here: incentives in our budget to get doctors and nurses into rural communities, and the tax credit for volunteer firefighters. pension income credit, we've increased the age limit for RSPs, reduced the minimum RIF withdrawal, introduced income splitting for the pensions of our seniors. Immediately forward by cracking down on elder abuse, supporting family care caregivers, and delivering the largest increase in the guaranteed income supplement in a quarter century. Our third priority is to continue to fully fund federal transfers for health care. Now friends, let me be crystal clear about the difference between ourselves and our opponents when it comes to balancing the budget. When faced with a deficit, the Liberals cut health care spending by one-third since taking office. Our government has increased health care spending. <laughs> by self-transfers by 6% per year. We said we would, and we have. We say we will, and we shall. Our fourth priority is taking action so that Canadians feel safer in their streets and neighborhoods Friends, the rights of criminals must not come ahead of right. you. Thank you. 
prevent crime in the first place. Four, friends, four clear priorities to move forward immediately. Another reason why Canada needs a stable, conservative majority. <laughs> The kind of leadership you've come to expect from the Conservative team as we have come out of the worldwide recession. Friends, look around you. Look around you at the rest of the world. You see it every night. Debt crisis in Europe, disaster in the Pacific, turmoil in the Middle East, very serious challenges south of our border. Friends, remember that amid all of these troubles under our leadership, this country, Canada, is the closest thing the world has to an island of stability and stability. We have done great things as a country, but we can do greater things yet. 
if we go forward, if we go forward and not back, not back to wars over the Constitution and language policies, not back to pie in the sky promises paid by tax increases. Friends, everything now, those are the choices, everything now depends on your final efforts in these final days of this campaign. Lundi prochain est une date cruciale. Allez voter. En fait, et faites en sorte de donner le pouvoir à votre région avec un gouvernement conservateur majoritaire. I thank you for all your work. I know you've been working very hard. I know some of you have been working hard for a very long time, and some of you are all this cycle of elections. But remember, the unfortunate truth is this. Nothing has been decided yet. Every effort is going to matter. Every riding is in play. Every vote counts. And I know that Canada can count on you. On May the 2nd, Make these conservative candidates a strong part of a strong government for the true north, strong and free. can be taken for granted. Let's do everything we can in these crucial final days to keep Canada on the right track, to choose the economy, to choose stability, to choose security by electing a strong, stable, national, majority conservative government.